context and data flow diagram sample one YouTube now basically in this video we're going to look at the actual media I use the actual software platform I use to actually share my videos and that is YouTube and we're going to look at this from both uh, the diagramic standpoints of a context diagram and data flow diagrams this is to show two things it's firstly to show the difference once again between the two diagrams but also how a context diagram can be used as a planning tool for building a much more complex data flow diagram so let's get started so the first one we're going to look at is a context diagram for YouTube. Now, when starting any type of context diagram, the first thing you want to get is that one circle in the middle to represent the entire information system. And in this case, it's the YouTube information system. We're going to plant that right in the center. It's a single circle on its own. It's the only circle we'll be using in this diagram because it is a context diagram. The next point is to put up our external entities. Firstly, we have a YouTube partner, and um, I perceive that as someone who makes money off their YouTube videos. So essentially, they put in their account details in the system. They can use the social media elements of this system to like, share, and subscribe videos, and they can upload videos. In return, okay, they can view streamed videos that are already on YouTube. They can also use uh, see replies to their videos through social media, and they also receive payment receipts from their uploaded movies which have been monetized okay back showing that they got paid from youtube now another type of external entity though is the youtube viewer okay so this is someone who does not have a monetized account this person can pretty much do all the same things so once again they put in their account details in the system they can like share and subscribe videos they can still upload videos okay and in reply back from the system, they can still view stream videos and they still get replies to their videos. The one difference is they don't get paid and through not getting paid means they don't have ads on their videos. But that brings us to the next external entity and that is that of the advertisers. The people who actually pay YouTube to put their ads on videos, whether they be um, video ads at the beginning of the videos or the actual ones that pop up during a video. Okay, so they enter into the system, okay, payment for their advertisements, they pay YouTube. Okay, to put their ads on videos and then they've also got to supply the ad media those videos those pop-up messages and all that that get applied to people's videos that have been uploaded then the last part of the equation here for the context diagram is the movement of money okay so the advertisers money goes to the bank so YouTube needs to send okay the payment from the advertisers to their bank but then they've also got to then pay the partners and in response okay those payment receipts need to come back to YouTube to say that Firstly, that um, they've received the advertisers' money, and then secondly, that the uh, partners have then been paid by YouTube, okay, into their own bank accounts, okay, and that's where the payment receipts come from. So this was a context diagram understanding the functionality of YouTube. Now let's look at it from the standpoint of a data flow diagram. So we're going to start off this diagram once again with our external entities this time. So both external entities of the YouTube partner and the YouTube viewer, as we saw from the context diagram. We've established that these two pretty much send and receive the same type of data okay, from the system, barring one area, and that was that of payment. So we'll try to illustrate that in our diagram. But the first step for both is to log in. Okay, They enter their login details, they log into account, and then that is verified against an account database. And that would distinguish the partners from the viewers. Who's got a monetized account, who doesn't have a monetized account? Okay, After confirmation, the first most basic step that YouTube does is give you access to view videos. Okay, and this is through links, through URLs, or through doing searches through YouTube's um, search engine. Okay, and they can find videos and view it, primarily what most people use YouTube for. If they are going to use uh, YouTube for uploading videos, okay, they need to drag a video into the browser in the upload area, and then the video is then uploaded okay, to YouTube. Once the video is uploaded then, we can then, when the full file upload is done, edit the video, okay? Uh, we use the editing tools there, and with those editing tools, we put in descriptions, we can actually um, cut out parts of the video, we can put in meta tags to actually link the video so that if someone does a search, okay, they can find the video, okay? So that's its whole process there itself. And then once the video is obviously edited, it's ready to be viewed once it's published, okay? And it can be viewed like any other video. Now, once that video is online then, the social media aspect also comes into play. Now, the social media works both ways for both type of YouTube users. The first one is they can like, comment, subscribe, and share all these movies that they're accessing, but they're also receiving the feedback from their own videos that have been uploaded, okay? And then this feedback 
returns to the two users, okay? People are liking your videos, what comments they've written on them. That comes back to the users. Now, this is primarily available, all of it, to both types of users. We do have to bring up now the monetized portion of YouTube. So, here is the advertiser again, and their first step is they need to pay YouTube, okay? They are paying YouTube for advertisement, and that goes straight to the bank account, okay? So, the bank gets paid, okay, for the advertisement from the advertisers. Once that payment's made, okay, they have to apply the ads to videos. So they need to submit advertisements to YouTube. And then those advertisements are attached to existing YouTube partners' movies. Okay, and they're applied to them. And then because they've been attached to YouTube partners' movies, then the bank needs to then pay those YouTube partners for the fact that those ads are on and based on clicks and uh, how many likes they're getting. Okay, they get a certain amount of payment and then a payment receive is sent to that partner based on the performance okay, of the ads on those movies. So I hope this video has given you a good understanding of not only context diagrams and data flow diagrams, but I think it's given a good outline of how YouTube works itself. Okay, but in understanding that the context diagram helped us plan this data flow diagram. Context diagram, as always, only has the center circle being its only circle and being the information system itself. Whereas this data flow diagram has multiple processes separated, giving further depth to the flow of data between processes within the system, as well as one database in this actual uh, information system, okay, that of the accounts database, which determines what type of account each user has and what they're eligible for. So um, I hope this helps you with your study and understanding of context and data flow diagrams, and I'll have some more samples up in future.